What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2022 Acura TLX Type S. So about the Type S version. Well, last year I was very impressed with the regular TLX. It was a very, very impressive vehicle and part of that was because they had always built that regular TLX with the Type S in mind. They kind of over-engineered the regular version to prepare for the epic Type S version here. And so I've been very excited to test this out and uh, man, it looks really nice too. So it just builds again, upon the excellent good looks of the brand new TLX. And so we have the same body proportions and all that kind of stuff. And the only exterior changes you'll see are that you have a little bit of more aggressive front grille there. You also have a bigger front lip here, which really juts out nicely. Uh, but you still have those very cool jewel eye LED headlights. That's an Acura trademark thing. And they look so, so good here on this vehicle, especially combined with this Apex Blue Pearl paint. It really pops here in the sun. Um, but I just love that front end, you know, it's just a little bit of a more aggressive look here. And uh, you can kind of get some of the aggressive looks with the regular A-spec version of the uh, TLX here, but the Type S, you know, amps it up a little bit more. Of course, you have the large Type S badge there in the grill as well. That front mount intercooler hiding behind the front bumper there is another clue that, uh, you know, this is something that's got a little bit more performance than you might be expecting. But then coming down to the sides, that's where you really start to get a bigger clue that this isn't just, you know, a nice appearance package and it has some serious performance. So you have these 20 inch Y spoke wheels. They're the, these are the optional lightweight wheels. They're $800 extra and they come with summer tires, but otherwise you'd still get 20 inch wheels. They just would have all season tires and they're a multi-spoke design. They're a little bit heavier. I believe these wheels save about four to five pounds each wheel, but um, yeah, they look fantastic. And right behind them, you can see the larger front brakes you get here on the Type S version, but that really is your first clue with those bright red calipers that this thing isn't messing around. But I love how you have some pretty sizable Type S badges here on it so that you can't miss mistake this for a non-Type S. I also love how you have the black mirror caps here, another little thing to give a little bit more aggression. And uh, just, you know, the TLX in general just looks so, so good for this generation with this elongated hood, which gives it a more dramatic and stylized front end here. But even the fenders there towards the rear, how they kind of jut out and almost look like a little bit of a wide body design there in the rear. It really, uh, again, just really looks unlike anything else in this segment. Now, there's a lot of other vehicles in this segment that look a lot more bland and just kind of want to blend in a little bit or they look weird for the sake of looking weird. This just looks so classy and so good. And I think it's going to really stand out on the road, especially in eye popping colors like this. And then going out to the back, uh, it doesn't let up. It still has more of that aggressive look in the back there. So you have that black spoiler there, which is larger than any other TLX spoiler and looks really great. You have again, another nice large type S badge. And uh, then those exhaust tips, I was kind of shocked. This is my first time actually seeing this car in person and I was like whoa those exhaust tips are bigger than I expected I can actually like fit my fist just barely through there but that's how large those exhaust tips are and so you can't miss that especially with the polished tips that they have they really stand out and again give you a very strong clue that this isn't just some ordinary TLX. And uh, so, you know, the rear diffuser there in the bottom of the rear bumper there, and again, just the good looking taillights and uh, the trunk lid there, everything just looks so, so good from every single angle here in the TLX. And uh, yeah, this Type S version just amps it up very nicely. But again, it still is understated and classy. It doesn't look like they tried too hard or anything, and it'll still totally fit in if you're trying to go for that low profile look. All right, so let's start up and go for a drive. The TLX Type S actually has a unique Type S kind of key there. It's the same Acura key as any other key, but I really love how you have the Type S badge there on the front of it. It's a little bit of a larger key, but it has a nice weight to it. And it's not too thick, so at least it has that going for it, but uh, just a couple of metal buttons there on the back. And overall, a pretty nice key. Although again, I just wish it was maybe a little bit shorter. There's no need for all this length. But anyway, uh, it is keyless access, keyless entry, and push button start, of course. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it starts right up. Also, if you're curious to hear about the interior in the TLX Type S, my wife and I actually just did a full in-depth interior review already on the regular TLX last year. So for the Type S version here, there aren't too many huge changes. Uh, basically, the interior is pretty similar to what you're going to get on an A-spec version of a regular TLX. Now, you do have the unique uh, like Type S steering wheel here with a badge here at the bottom of it. But even that, you know, it's the same kind of shape as you get on a regular A-spec version. Uh, even the seats, you know, the material and stuff, all the same as you get on an A-spec. Now, you can get an optional orchid beige uh, leather which is exclusive to the type s this one doesn't have it though but i do love the red leather with the blue exterior combo it's a very cool touch now you do have the adjustable bolstering for these seats which is you know great that you have that um, because i believe that's something you don't get in the a spec but you do get in the advanced so you get kind of like the advanced seat shells um, with the uh, you know actual trimmings here of the a spec version but i mean all the trim and stuff is all the same gauges are all the same um, you know there isn't really anything unique there compared to again that a spec 
Trek version. But I mean, it's still a very nice interior. I still love this interior. I think that it's really cool looking. It works really well. I don't hate the infotainment system like so many other reviewers do. I think once you learn it and get used to it over a period of time, it actually gets to be very digestible and really good. My only complaint with the infotainment is here in the 2022 model year, we still don't have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Uh, in 2021, I didn't really complain about it too much because it wasn't as common, but now for the 2022 model year, more and more vehicles, even a brand new Civic for 2022 has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in its top trim. So for the, you know, the fact that the TLX here in its top Type S version, over $50,000 doesn't have that, and a you know $28,000 Civic does, kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit. So I hope that they upgrade that maybe, you know, mid model year or next year or something. But aside from that, I mean, I really have no complaints. You know, the back seat isn't big, um, but aside from that, you know, I think it's a very nice interior. And if you want to hear more, like I said, definitely go watch the interior review with my wife. We go over every nook and cranny of this interior. All right, so setting off here in the 2022 TLX Type S. Well, I'm not going to lie. This is one of the most exciting vehicles of the year for me. I was really looking forward to this after just how impressive the regular TLX was last year. I was so blown away and I was like, I cannot wait for the Type S version. And here we are a year later and uh, it just feels really cool to roll around. And um, you know I mean, especially just the visibility in this vehicle isn't the best, you know, because you actually, it feels a little bit uh, large. And But I mean, you have the front fenders there that really kind of jut out it just really feels cool rolling down the road you feel like you're sitting low in this vehicle as well it feels a little sportier than the average luxury sports sedan does um, but a lot of the things that um, I think were really smooth in the regular TLX are a little bit rougher here in the Type S that I'm picking up on in my first few miles of driving because uh, like first off uh, throttle response um, there's like a little bit of a weird dead zone and then it immediately like ramps up kind of quickly with a throttle response and it kind of makes it a little tricky to be smooth and also the torque converter they did beef up this 10-speed automatic here for the type s version and anyway it feels a little more rough in its engagement whenever you're starting from a stop um, and it just again feels a little bit trickier to be smooth with so it all adds to this sportier vibe and a little bit of a rougher around the edges kind of feeling to the type s that i'm picking up on so far other things that I'm noticing here, so brakes also are pretty touchy. There is hardly any pedal travel before you really start getting some aggressive braking action out of these larger brakes. Um, and that's something I don't remember being, you know, so extreme in the regular TLX. So, you know, from your very first test drive, even if you're used to the new TLX, this is going to feel markedly different. And um, so that's all interesting. You also have a little bit of a quicker steering rack, a little bit of a sharper steering feel, and feels pretty good so far. We'll have to go out onto a back road and see, you know, how the handling is and stuff. Otherwise. You still have the excellent refinement here the TLX you know feels very quiet very smooth here in the normal mode uh, you know it does have adaptive dampers of course so they're a little bit softer here in the normal mode you can go to a comfort mode to make them even softer and then in the sport and sport plus modes um, it will get a little bit stiffer there but um, you also have a nice little growl from this engine it's not as loud as I would like you do have an active exhaust um, and so in normal mode like we're in right now it kind of closes some of those valves and then we'll go ahead and put it into the sport mode and open that up. But as we're getting ready to turn down onto a back road here, we'll go ahead and put it up into sport and you have to hold and turn for sport plus. So we're in sport plus now. Transmission also needs to go into its dedicated sport mode. And yeah, let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does. Here we go. Okay. Wow, that took a long time to respond. And then it pulls nicely. Um, and now, wow, it's really aggressive with the transmission tuning and the Sport Plus with the Sport on the transmission here. Sounds good though. It's pretty punchy, um, but you can tell that I think it's holding back boost in the lower gears. And then once you get up to the higher speeds, it starts to really build speed nicely. Um, so anyway, uh, we're running a brand new 3 liter V6 engine for Acura. Pretty big turbo on it. It's a twin scroll turbo. It does 15.1 PSI and it's uh, proudly displayed right there uh, on the top of the engine bay. And uh, anyway, so this vehicle does 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque. There aren't any 0 to 60 times listed by Acura and none of the magazines have really gotten around to testing a 0 to 60 precisely yet. But the ranges seem to be in the high 4 second or low 5 second range. Um, you know, from the seat of the pants kind of feeling because it didn't launch super hard and because it's not, you know, pulling like a freight train in first and second gear and things like that, you know, it doesn't feel quite as quick as I would hope it would. Honestly, it feels kind of like a low five second car. Um, there is no dedicated manual mode, but I'm going to just pull on the manual paddle here and see if we can do a first gear start, see if it will actually let me go into first. It keeps wanting to start in second, but let's see if, yeah, it will not let me start in first gear. Um, anyway, second gear here. 
responsive there for the manual mode. So maybe if you manually, you know, if you're deliberately wanting to take off, maybe popping it into that, you know, forcing it into second, but I don't know why it doesn't start in first. I guess maybe first gear can't handle all that power or something. Regardless, I do like, you get a little bit of a, you know, peakiness from the turbo there. I mean, the, I think peak boost comes on still very low, but you know, you can tell that it's, it, it really wants to take off and feels good. I'll go ahead and put it back into the auto mode though and let it do its own thing since it seems to have a mind of its own anyway a little bit. Um, but it still wants to be very sporty here with the shifting, but we're coming up some corners here. Let's see how the Type S version handles. Wow, all right, oh man. <laughs> I'm getting more giddy about the cornering than I am the acceleration. This is where this thing comes alive. Good grief. <laughs> wow, sorry, this is kind of just like moving me just how well this feels around corners. Again, I was blown away last year with the regular TLX and oh, this, yeah, this did everything I wanted it to do with the Type S version. Wow, that feels really good around corners. So, um, you do have more weight here, obviously, with this bigger engine and all the other stuff that's beefed up to handle all the extra performance. Um, it weighs, I think, around 250 pounds heavier than a regular TLX, but you can't feel that extra weight. It really, I mean, maybe you feel like an extra 50 pounds. It does not feel like it is 250 pounds heavier than a regular TLX. But, oh man, this front end grip. <laughs> I, this is bizarre. I've never been more giddy on a back road than I have been on the, you know, compared to the acceleration. But this is, wow, this is remarkable with the handling. Um, so, you know, you have the double wishbone front suspension, a new thing here for the uh, TLX and the Type S benefits from that as well. You also have these, like I said, the lighter wheels here and the actual summer tires here on this uh, version with, you know, it's like an $800 package. Very reasonable for these wheels and tires if you actually, you know, are going to be okay with running a dedicated summer tire setup. But, oh man, this thing is so good around corners. So you have lots of grip. They're 255 wide tires, um, you know, totally good and uh, plenty of grip but it's just like insane. I think it's just the true torque vectoring diff with the super handling all wheel drive system that really works its magic and it is apparent. This feels like it has rear wheel steer, like not mildly, like it feels like, I, like it's, it's, it's magic. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but you really have to take one of these on a test drive, go around a tight corner in this thing and it will blow your mind, at least in my opinion. It is, I mean, it feels like it handles way better than a vehicle that's this large, that's this heavy, it really is impressive. Um, now, I mean, you know, you like, again, you are still feeling like you're in a large vehicle and you don't really escape that, so it doesn't feel maybe quite as nimble as, you know, like a Mercedes C43 wheel, which just has smaller dimensions, or even like one of the other underdogs I really love in this segment is the Cadillac CT5V. That feels a little bit uh, smaller as far as the width and stuff, and a little more darty, this, it doesn't, it, this doesn't feel darty like it's, it's begging you to dive into a corner, but once you do dive into a corner, it responds with 110%. Um, whereas the Cadillac just kind of does what you expect it to do. The TLX Type S here does more than you're expecting it to do, in my opinion. And it really, it, it's shocking. I mean, honestly, like it, it, it just blew me away back there. I'm kind of speechless, to be honest. Um, so yeah, handling is where it's at with the, with the Type S. Um, if you stomp on this thing and you're not blown away by the acceleration like I wasn't, don't write it off. Please take it around a corner and... <laughs> I mean, the power is still plentiful. I mean, I'm glad you have these larger brakes too. They're 1.3 inches larger for the front rotors, four piston calipers there um, on these. Yeah, I think they're 14.3 inch front rotors and uh, I mean, very strong brakes, which is what you're going to want for something like this, of course, but man, oh man. <laughs> And I mean, the transmission is doing a great job here of being in the right gear, being very aggressive and everything. But yeah, the steering, I mean, even in Sport Plus mode here, it's not overly weighty. It's actually fairly light for, you know, a Sport Plus setting on these you know, luxury sports sedans. But I love that because it, it really exaggerates that diving in feeling. You don't have to fight the wheel. You don't have to, you know, be a super jacked dude to, you know, turn the wheel on this thing. You know, it's not like it's overcompensating with extra weight. It just feels so, so good. But I'm gonna do another acceleration here. I'm gonna try going from an absolute stop and see if we can get a little bit more of an exciting acceleration. Here we go. Okay, so I kind of kind of built some boost there, stood on the brake and the gas, and kind of did a little bit of a makeshift launch. That felt a little bit better. I got a little bit more of a G sensation and kind of took off better on me there. So, okay, 
it, it's redeemed itself a good bit there with that acceleration. It's just, I don't know why it was so slow to respond from five miles an hour. It, you know, should be right there, ready to go no matter what. This is a sports sedan. It should always, always never make you wait and always be ready to just take off at a moment's notice. Um, but, you know, whenever you are actually brake torquing it there, it does, you know, pick up very nicely. And that, now that felt more like 355 horsepower to me. And, you know, another thing I do have to comment on, though, is I do wish this exhaust was louder. It's an active exhaust. If you're going to do an active exhaust, give people the flexibility to really make it crazy. Because, you know, I feel like if you're someone who wants a really good sound out of this thing, I mean, it doesn't sound bad. It's, it sounds nice. But for an active exhaust, I expect more. There's no crackles or pops. Um, you know, there's nothing really wild about the exhaust. It just sounds good. But, you know, I just, I wish for a little bit more. We'll do another little sample of the acceleration here. And it knocks off those shifts really quickly. Definitely no waiting around with this transmission. Just, yeah, I wouldn't bother with, uh, you know, trying to manually shift. I mean, we'll go back into manual mode and see about some higher speed shifting here. Yeah, so it won't go into second. Yeah, manual shifts are actually, down shifts are okay. Up shifts though, kind of slow. Um, and honestly, I mean, you don't have much of a rev range to play with either. I mean, this thing redlines at like 6,100 RPMs. It's like even lower than the average 6,500 RPM redline you get in most other vehicles these days. So, you know, manually shifting when you don't really have I mean, more than a few thousand RPM to play with anyway, eh, you know, so I would just leave it in the automatic mode. But, you know, it's nice to give you paddles since this is a Type S. I mean, it does sound good. I don't want to be overly harsh on the exhaust because I think it does sound good. I just wish you actually heard more of the exhaust. I still feel like I'm hearing mostly induction note and it certainly is a much sweeter sound than the four cylinder on the regular t uh, TLX. You know, that sounded fine, but you know, the V6 is certainly a much sweeter sound, but goody, goody, we got more tight corners coming up here. And uh, yeah, it just, uh, I'm, I'm so, so impressed. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna keep repeating myself here, but I mean, look at the way this thing just rockets out of these corners. And it's so stable and it's so rock solid too. It's really uncanny. I mean, I actually was just passed by a Miata and that, it makes me kind of think of something that direct as like a new Miata with how direct the handling is here in this. Obviously you're in a huge vehicle, it's heavier, but it has that willingness and that eagerness that you feel in like a Miata or something like that, which I know is crazy to compare this to a Miata, but that's truly how effortless it is to go around corners and how it wants to just be so playful with you. I love it. Um, I'm not getting any kind of like tail happiness or anything. I mean, it is still all wheel drive and it still is a front wheel drive based kind of system, but it can send um, a ton of torque to the rear there. And uh, you need even overdrive the inside rear wheel there to give you 100% of whatever torque is going to the back there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is no such thing as understeer in this thing. Um, it is. It is like neutral plus. <laughs> like it's it's even better than what you expect out of a very neutral feeling handling vehicle. Um, I mean, because that last corner I just went around usually provokes any kind of understeer or oversteer, and this thing was just like glued to the road. Like it was like unrealistically good around, <laughs> around that last corner there. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't know how they did that, uh, but bravo to the Acura engineers that made this thing handle this good. Compared to the Genesis G70, now the G70 that I was reviewing was not on summer tires, so it was lacking in grip a little bit. So maybe with better tires, the G70 would feel better, but this, I think this is, even if you had summer tires on the G70, I can't imagine it feeling nearly this good. I still think the CT5 um, probably is a tiny bit better than the G70 as well, and then this is, this is king in my mind. Now, I have not driven the newest C43, I've not driven the newest S4, or the newest M340i from BMW, so I can't compare it to those, but this is one of the best handling vehicles, hands down, I've driven this year and in a good long while. I think, honestly, in another vehicle that doesn't even have a direct competitor to the Type S, but the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Um, this actually handles better than Giulia. The Giulia was the benchmark in my mind. This now takes the benchmark. I know it's not quite a fair comparison because the, you know Giulia doesn't have a higher performing version like this until you go to the full blown crazy quadrifolio. But man, this thing is super impressive. Anyway, I'm not gonna ramble on anymore about that. Another thing though that's not too bad is even in Sport Plus mode here, these adaptive dampers are actually soaking up these bumps pretty well. So we're going over potholes. There's a nice little pothole. Feels totally good. 
good. But anyway, we'll go ahead and put it up into the comfort mode and uh, just see, you know, just how soft and comfortable it can get. You can hear it quiets down nicely. We'll go ahead and pop it out of the sport mode for the transmission. And listen to that. Totally chill and feels really good. And I, Honda and Acura, I swear, they have some of the best adaptive dampers where you can really feel an enormous difference. Now we're out on the highway here. It still is very comfortable even in the sport mode. And that's impressive because they did a lot of enhancements to the suspension here for the Type S version. So it has 40% stiffer front springs and then in the rear and the front you have uh, stiffer anti-roll bars and they also stiffen up the whole chassis. In this you have like the strut tower bars and things like that to kind of, you know, um, keep everything a little more solid. But I don't really feel any of that extra rigidity here from behind the wheel. It doesn't feel any less comfortable than the TLX from my memory, even in the sport mode here. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and just go back down into comfort mode, just like we're doing a normal, relaxed uh, cruise here on the highway. And yeah, it just does really well. Now, you know, another thing here, of course, you have all the Acura watch, you know, safety stuff. So they have their full safety suite, which is, you know, it comes basically in all the TLX versions, very well equipped, but you know, you have blind spot monitoring, you have all the adaptive cruise control stuff, you have the lane keeping assist. So we'll go ahead and put on the uh, adaptive cruise control here and see how that does. So I turned on the system and the adaptive cruise control system is working totally fine, but for some reason it is not picking up the lanes. And as you can see, the lanes are very clearly painted here. Nothing hard. It hasn't picked up the lanes once here. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on. I'm guessing that's just a glitch with this car. Um, so I'm not able to test out how the uh, car does the steering assist, but in the regular TLX, it did a very good job. So, um, you know, maybe just test it on your test drive, make sure it actually works in yours. Yeah. So so can't really comment on that, but the adaptive cruise system works great. Works just how you would expect it to. But anyway, uh, thanks to Acura, I'm gonna have the TLX Type S here for the next few days. So I'm gonna drive all over the place, and then I'll come back and give you guys my final real world fuel economy, as well as my thoughts on the pricing, its comp competition, and anything else that I notice here during my fun week with the TLX Type S. So I've been driving the TLX Type S here for a few more days now. I've only had this vehicle um, for about four days or so. It was like Monday to Friday morning. Um, so I didn't have a ton of time with it as much as I usually do, but I still managed to put 92 miles on it in that time. And um, it was a, a really fun few days here. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's really, really impressive. I think the sound has gotten better over the course of the week. Um, you know, because originally I was like, this is a little too quiet. Now it's okay. You know, whenever you're comparing it to the S4s and the M340i's and stuff, the M340i probably sounds a little bit better, but I think compared to most of the other stuff, this sounds pretty good. And honestly, compared to like a Genesis G70, this actually probably sounds even a little bit better. So, it's not bad. Now, I will say, I still think the king in this segment as far as sounds go is the Cadillac CT5V. That thing crackles and pops and just sounds fantastic. None of these cars in this segment are perfect, but I think the TLX Type S, I really, really enjoyed it. And um, considering the value proposition of it, I think it would be my pick in this segment. I'll get more into the pricing and all that kind of stuff in a few minutes. But anyway, a few other minor little nitpicks here too, uh, a couple of little things. First off, the throttle response still isn't what I want it to be. Um, it just, it's weird from a stop, because even when you have the start-stop system turned off, it's still, there's just times where I'm waiting a beat for the gas. You know, I, I press the pedal, I wait a beat, and then it starts going. It always has this little bit of a delay to it from a stop that kind of annoys me. Um, and I don't remember that being the case with the regular TLX. And also just the, the transmission in here isn't always smooth. Like in the regular TLX, it was almost always smooth. This, every once in a while, it shifts a little rough and it will be a little bit, you can just tell they kind of hot rodded this 10 speed, I think, in order to have it handle the power of, you know, because this 10 speed in every other Honda and Acura product does not have to deal with this much power. And I think obviously they upgraded it to handle that. It's not like it can't handle that power, but it just seems like it lost some refinement in the process because of that. So I guess they had to give up a little bit of a compromise there for, for some reason. Not a huge deal. It's just something that you don't have to worry about in a lot of the other vehicles in this segment that are smoother. And it's just, it's one of those minor little things you might not think is a big deal, but every single day, if it's like every single time you're leaving from a stop sign, you're like waiting a beat and it's not doing what you want it to do, it can get a little bit under your skin, I think, after a while. Again, I don't think it'd be a deal breaker for this car by any means, but just one little thing I wanted to mention. Otherwise, though, it did very well in the week here. I did test out the adaptive cruise control system because that was another thing that was a little bit buggy. 
you know, in the first part of this video. So I did take it on more highway drives and I did have it actually work with the lane keeping assist the other time. So it all worked flawlessly. I don't know what the deal was that first time. Maybe this car is just a little bit buggy since it's early production or something. But um, on all of the subsequent highway drives, lane keeping assist worked fine. It worked very well, just like it has done in all the other Acuras I've ever tested it in. Then worked great, no issues there. Um, one thing too that, uh, you know, probably is to be expected in a vehicle in this segment is the fuel economy wasn't great. The rated at 19 MPG in the city, 25 on the highway and 21 combined. Uh, in my driving here though, of now 95 miles, I've done 17.4 MPG. Now that was mostly suburban around town, you know, 35 mile per hour driving, that kind of stuff. Uh, wasn't a ton of stop and go, wasn't a lot of highway either. But uh, I mean, I was hoping to get close to the city number, but I also remember in the regular TLX, I think I ended up getting like only 18 MPG in that. So comparing it uh, to that, you know, I think I'm only a half MPG off for an extra like 83 horsepower or whatever in this. So, um, you know, when you look at it in that point of view, it's not bad. This is pretty par for the course, but just one thing to keep in mind, you aren't going to be getting great fuel economy in this vehicle if you go for it. That's not something I think would be a deal breaker, especially considering the value of this compared to a lot of its competitors. Um, so that's the last thing I gotta hit on, is the value in this thing is fantastic, and I think that's really what's gonna move these even more than the fantastic styling or you know the, any of those types of things. So. Now this one has that $800 optional summer tire package with these Y-spoke wheels. So this one as tested is about $54,500 including destination. And basically the only thing that comes close to this is the Genesis G70, which is within a couple hundred dollars. It's just a couple hundred dollars cheaper. And the G70 does give you a couple more things you don't get in this. Um, like for example, the G70 gives you a head-up display, which they've omitted here. Cause since again, this is basically like an A-spec interior you get you do without a lot of stuff that even the advanced trim of the type s gets another acceleration yeah it pulls strong uh but yeah so you know that's really the only one that comes close to that and the g70 also is a little bit smaller um and you actually i think you even get a tinier back seat than this uh you know so this doesn't have a great back seat but it's still i think a tiny bit better than at least the g70 so it's a, maybe a little more usable i do think the stereo system is better in this than it is in the g70 and this does have some perks going for it uh and honestly you know the g70 is a fantastic handling vehicle and again unless i drove on with the summer tires which i actually will be driving the 2022 g70 here very shortly so stay tuned for that if you want to hear more of my thoughts of this versus that i'll touch on that in the g70 review but based on my past experience in the g70 this handles better this has way better steering and this just feels a little more beastly than the g70 it's also a bigger car so you feel like you're you know handling something that's a lot larger i think the g70 might feel a little more nimble uh, just because of its size but i mean this has way quicker steering feels way more excited to go around a corner than the g70 does seems like it has better grip as well um so but yeah i'll have to try out the revised 2022 g70 to you know give you a final updated you know comparison of the two in my mind but um you know that's the only one that comes close to this otherwise i do still love the ct5v the ct5v is fantastic but the problem with that is they're 10 grand more expensive for a comparably equipped one to this 10 grand is a lot more and now cadillac might give you more discounts than acura will so i don't know what you'll actually pay for a ct5v but you know if you could get it close to this then that, that would actually be a very tough um, comparison to my mind because the CT5V you have a bigger back seat, bigger trunk, um, and you still have fantastic handling, a better sounding exhaust, and you have the option of like Super Cruise, which is super cool and really kind of gives that a leg up over all of its competitors as far as if you're doing lots of highway driving and stuff. Um, but you know, the screen's smaller in the CT5V, uh, but it does have like massage seats and a few other things that you don't even have here in the TLX Type S. So if money was no object, I could potentially see myself still maybe going for a CT5V over this, but then again, 10 grand is an enormous amount of change, even, you know, whenever you're discussing 50 and $60,000 luxury sedans. So, you know, for that reason alone, I think I would have to go for this. I also think this looks better than the CT5V. Not that the CT5 looks bad, but this still just is a jaw dropper with the styling. So I think that would be another thing that would make me kind of probably go for this. So at the end of the day, it all kind of all roads lead back to the TLX. Because even you look at depreciation, and none of these things, 
in this segment depreciate really well. Um, but compared to the German stuff, which all depreciates, according to cars.com, over 50% depreciation in the first five years versus the Acura here is about 46%. Again, not a huge difference, but at least it's a little bit better than like the 53%, 54% of the BMW and stuff. Um, and the G70 is also supposedly around 46% depreciation. So Genesis is right there with this neck and neck. So it really comes down to the Genesis G70, I think, and this at the end of the day. If you actually do care about your money and you're trying to, you know, not just write a blank check for whatever you want, if you are considering price, I think it's a tough call between this and the G70, but I would say, personally, I would go for this over the G70. Now, I will say though, you know, if you are someone who's really price conscious and you're debating about whether to go up to the Type S over a regular TLX, that um, also is an interesting case because I think, you know, this the suspension's a little bit stiff in this. Now, for a daily driver, it'd be fine. I think the performance makes up for it. And I still, you know, if I had the disposable income, would go for the Type S. But if you're someone who's price sensitive and you're mostly just wanting, you know, a sporty daily driver that, you know, uh, still has great handling, still has good amounts of power, I don't think you could go wrong really going for a regular TLX still. I still think they have fantastic handling. It actually feels a little lighter, obviously, because you have have less weight, you still have the same interior, especially if you go for an A-Spec, it's an almost identical interior to this. You still have a good amount of power, I mean 272 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. Obviously this is a lot more power for not that much extra money, I mean really you're only paying like maybe five grand over, you know, comparable uh, TLX, so maybe it's six or seven tops, but even still, you know, that's not a huge upcharge for the enormous gains in performance, but like I said, the 355 horsepower doesn't rip your head off from a stop. Um, it's not quite as crazy as it might sound on paper. So in the real world, you know, I think personally, you know, if I am trying to watch my money and I'm, you know, trying to save a few bucks, I think that going for a regular TLX would still be a lot of fun to be a really great daily driver and also a very dynamic sports sedan still, especially if you put the same summer tires on that that this has. I think you, you know, have very impressive grip still with that. And I mean, I, you can watch my regular TLX review. I was blown away by that thing last year still. I think the TLX Type S is great. Regular TLX is great too. Can't go wrong with either choice depending on what your budget is and stuff. G70 is also a fantastic choice though. I don't fault anyone for going for that either. But yeah, so that's about all of my thoughts here. I'm not even really talking about the German stuff because all the German competitors are well into the like $60,000 range whenever you're getting into some, something that's comparably equipped to this. And they're just so much more expensive, just like the Cadillac, but yet they depreciate faster. Uh, they have more expensive maintenance, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's another one if you know, you're going for that German stuff then you know you're probably not quite as worried about price and you're probably not even considering the TLX anyway because German brand owners you know seem to really have a very fierce loyalty to those German brands and so if you are open to the TLX though definitely give it a test drive I think the first quarter you go around in this thing the steering is going to blow you away and it's going to probably be something that uh, it's going to be very very enticing it's they did a fantastic job with the handling on this car for sure and that's all of my thoughts so let me know your thoughts on the TLX Type S in the comments below. Huge thanks to Acura for providing me here with the Type S to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.